Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about five makeup mistakes that you could be doing and how to avoid them and how to correct them. I am going to be doing the good ones on this side and the mistakes on this side and I'm going to do it with you, show you how uh, not to do it and how to do it and hopefully you can see a nice difference and maybe pinpoint some things that you could potentially be doing wrong. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe uh, to the channel. That would be really appreciated by you. I don't post all that often, but I'm trying to be better, of course always classic thing to say. So let's get into doing the makeup. First we are going to do the eyebrows. A common thing that people do with their eyebrows is bringing them down too low. People use a pencil that is way too dark and they make it really sharp and angular here. Oh my gosh it feels so wrong <laughs> and then they bring it down okay so that would be a perfect example of not the correct way to do your eyebrow I mean seriously it's just way too serious here it just makes you look really angry and unapproachable in my opinion and way too dark for my features I have very light features so I'm gonna do this side and I like to explain eyebrows as like two train tracks okay that you're filling in now you want to focus the strength on the upper train track to add lift and not pull it down like how he is pulled it further down so you want to really lift this outer corner here and that will give you a much more lifted look to your eye and little like feathery strokes and then when you come to this, the front part here very lightly and then almost like little you know flicks up just filling in and following your natural brow and just ever so slightly flicked up at the front but none of this square look okay and then you can always go in with the spoolie on the other end of your pencil if you're using one and brush it out and just give it a softer look which is my desired brow look what do you think I mean as you can see that's like a huge difference this one is just looking so harsh and angry and just severe and this one's just a nice lifted brow that you don't really pay attention to that's the point we want to frame our face shape our face but not be the main feature of our face absolutely not right so the next one is all about blush and bronzer placement so we have some cream products here powder cream it's the same kind of theory in terms of where you're placing them with the errors so let me do the bad side or the you know not advised side so most people they place it a bit too low and a bit too strong for adding a lifted look to the face And they do a bit too much here. And then, oh my goodness, some people do way too much on the nose. And then the same for the blush. Always too low, bringing down the face unnecessarily. They smile. A lot of people smile. It's like a myth. I, it's not the, always the best way. So you smile and you put your blush on and then you drop. Because we don't go around smiling all day. It drops when, when we relax our cheeks. And therefore then your, your blush is then placed in the wrong area. And people do this motion where they flick down 
and apply blush like that. Brings the face down. Okay, so let's do it the correct way. You want to start from up here where the hair line starts and then bring it in towards the direction of like your nose but don't come all the way that far and just softly blend it in and this is how you can sculpt your face but with a lifted approach and then don't forget the forehead you want to tie it in especially because of my big forehead <laughs> it helps so much just to make me not look so pale just tie in the makeup okay and then instead of placing it on the draw here you want to place it underneath the draw like where a shadow would be to really sculpt and warm the rest of the face underneath like this gives a much more chiseled jawline than putting it on and kind of reducing the jaw we want to make the jaw pop so you pop it underneath where you want to reduce you know potential areas and then leaving this bit to pop okay and then when you do your nose I kind of every nose is a little bit different but much more just subtle and just feathered everywhere rather than this harsh like line that comes straight down now for the blush I think this is the most beneficial tip of the day is doing a lifted blush technique okay you want to start you know with your face very relaxed you're starting on the highest point of your cheekbone and then you're going to go up so following where the the, the bronzer slash contour area is and it's going directly above that the, the two areas merge and blend together please uh, but you're starting on the very high point and then going up towards the hairline this gives it a lifted approach so I always explain it when I do my makeup lessons with clients circle flick like a Nike tick like a swoosh that is the angle okay so starting it up high and then flicking it up By putting the blush further back on the face when you're looking front on, it just doesn't bring it down. You still need to blend all the areas, but don't go too low. Don't go any lower than the nose. And then don't come in too close. Because it would just reduce that lifted look. I hope you can see the difference between those two sides and how this side is just not not giving us that that lift that you often want from your makeup always build up slowly right so this next one is all about eyeshadow and placing your eyeshadow in the right place to give us a again lifted eye appearance so I'm gonna do this side in not the best idea not the best way so when people do their eyeshadow they follow the natural hollow of their eye okay and bringing it all the way in here this closes off the eye this makes the eye appear more round than what it than what you need to make it appear okay So doing it like this is just enhancing the roundness of your eye and what's in trend and what looks looks more open and lifted is giving us a, a pulled out eye shape and you can do that with these types of eyeshadows but just by making sure you don't place it like this. So let me show you on the other side a better area to put it. Okay, Pop it in the same place where we started with the other side you're looking into your mirror with your eyes open so you can see where your um, where your crease is and you want to go ever so slightly above your natural crease the fold of your eye try to do it 
I always have my eyebrows quite lifted up. Try to have your eyebrows relaxed. And the key is to don't blend it in too far into your eye. You want to kind of stop where the eyeball, um, where the iris is. And then you start to swoop up and out. And pulling it out further is what can really help knock back this um, brow bone and open up the eye. Using a fluffy brush also really helps. So just build it up very slowly. I hope you can see how this eye looks more sunken and more round, whereas this eye, it looks more open and lifted and pulled up. We can even enhance it and make it look larger by adding some on the underneath part of our eye, on the lower lid, to just help open, open up the eye in a very soft way without using a dark eyeliner. And you can kind of connect it up to that top lid shadow. And then take your fluffy brush and blend them all together. So instead of bringing it all the way in to the inner corner and just going like this, okay, you need to be going here, bringing it in a lot shorter, and then flicking up and out bringing it up to the end of the, the tail of the, of the brow. And this helps push back, if you have an eye similar to me, it helps push that back, helps lift that. Whereas this, it just enhances the fact that this comes forward and creates a hood on your eye. Then adding some shimmer can really help open up, but only do it on the inner corner that's so pretty you kind of don't want it to come into this area just on this area here again you can grab your fluffy brush and just make sure all that's blended out nicely I'm just going to curl my lashes and put some mascara on I do have tips about mascara but in effort to make the video shorter, I will save that for a rainy day. Another really important thing that I see people do wrong with their makeup so often is their lips and the lip shape and where you're placing your lipstick and your lip liner. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate it with lip liner just because that is the most powerful way to show it. But is this also applies to just how you apply any regular lipstick lip product that you are doing is I like to call it people don't use the real estate of their lips okay so let me show you how to not make your lips look good okay so I've lined that side and I haven't completely utilized my cupid's bow this is what so many people do when they do their lipstick. They just draw straight across and they miss the two peaks. I can't explain to you enough how important it is to use the two peaks. Fill in, draw the two peaks in. It makes the world of difference to make your lips look bigger. We all want bigger lips. Um, lip filler is still hugely popular, though some people have been rumored to have been getting theirs dissolved. Uh, but it's not because we don't want big lips. So using the real estate and not just going straight across is vital to great lips with makeup. We all have kind of like the line or the color where our, our, our lip color stops. And in this area, in the center of your lip, I want you to just push it ever so slightly over those borders, rolling it over the edge. We're not recreating boundaries and areas we're just rolling it ever so slightly over the edge and then when you come to the edges of the lips you follow back down to your natural lip color and this is what gives you a fuller poutier center part of your lip
Look at the difference between those two lips. I hope you can see that difference. They are a huge difference. And I haven't overdrawn all of the lip. I have just overdrawn the center part of the lip. And on the outsides, I've left it my normal lip. And this is what helps you kind of get away with people not noticing too much that you've overdrawn certain areas. So if you overdraw it here, it looks more noticeable, more mean, more um, unnatural. If you just leave it normal on the outside and just ever so slightly overdraw the center part, it just creates a beautiful perkiness to your lips that I can't get enough of. And then matte lips are not going to do you any favors whatsoever when it comes to trying to look like you have bigger, more youthful, perky lips. Lip gloss does all the favors that we need. So this is the lip gloss that I absolutely love, the Fenty lip gloss. Adding this on top of a lined lip is just perfection. Now look at that, even better. One side is so enhanced just with makeup, not with any filler, and the other side just very sad looking. Right, so my final tip with the makeup mistakes that people are doing, it's gonna be less noticeable, but it is important for longevity of your makeup, is powdering and picking the correct brush to powder and set your face to make it work, essentially. Powdering in the right areas of your face to get longevity. If you're going in with a powder brush this big, okay, and just thinking that you're powdering your face like this, right, I powdered. That's not precision powdering. We need to utilize precision powdering, not mattifying, you know, beautiful areas where we want to leave glowy and not focusing on the areas where we need the setting and the control and letting the other areas where we don't need the control be free and glow. A pinpointed brush like this, they are often called highlighter brushes and placing it just where we want that setting power under the eyes on the center of the forehead, around the nose, and on the chin. Essentially, the T, the T zone as normal. The center of the face where it's not quite as flattering to look a bit shiny and glowy, whereas the outskirts of the face is exactly what we want. And that's how, by using a smaller brush, you can get where you need to powder and leave where you don't need to powder free to glow and look like natural gorgeous glowing skin. We just mattify where we need to set the makeup in place where we have more movement and where we want to reduce any shine. I think there's a difference. I can see a difference. I hope you can see a difference on the camera. Um, this side is just a lot more lifted, natural, but just glowing, pretty makeup. Whereas this side to me looks a lot harsher and I mean, the brow, the brow says it all, in, in my opinion. Um, but also the blush placement is not really doing any favors in terms of bringing down the face. And my lips just look really sad and these look happy. <laughs> and then my eyes look a lot more sunken and hooded on this side, if you can see. And then this one is just nice and lifted and natural looking, kind of like you can't really see what have I done, but it does bring back that brow bone ever so slightly. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed those five uh, makeup mistakes and seeing them in action. And hopefully you learnt something and maybe you will avoid doing those when you do your makeup next as well. Um, if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated from me and subscribe if you want to see more from me i do makeup videos and skincare videos and also beauty travel videos i hope to do another one of those in the next month so that's all come say hi on instagram where i'm much more active um, it's just at leticia bishop and i'll see you in the next one bye